Hey, it's Mike here, and today we're gonna look at some practical hacks, some hacticals, I'm sorry, in terms of plants that you can eat, and they're pretty amazing effects, and of course, we're gonna look at the science behind that, as usual. Specifically, we're gonna look at certain combinations of plants that have pretty awesome effects, or just certain plants that have amazing protective effects, and we're also gonna look at real life amounts that you might need to eat to get these effects as well. This might be the most youtube -y video I've ever made. It's actually a list of hacks, but let's just, let's just get right into it. Number one is my mint tea airplane radiation hack. This is my favorite travel hack, and to back it up, a lot of people aren't aware that when you're flying in a jet plane particularly, you're flying at an altitude that's so high that there's less atmosphere and more radiation from the sun can get through, and that radiation, like high amounts of any radiation, can do some DNA damage. Obviously, we're not talking about like handling nuclear waste levels of radiation, but still something that you would want to avoid. And thankfully from this study from the Journal of Toxicology and Industrial Health, a infusion of Melissa can help reduce that damage. Sweet Melissa. Don't worry, Melissa is just part of the scientific name for lemon balm and the infusion is just tea, which led to a quote, market reduction in plasma DNA damage. And that's in people who work in radiology who are exposed to low levels of radiation. The good news is lemon balm is just a type of mint and there's no reason to believe it's superior than regularly available types of mint tea that you can find in virtually every airport. For example, if there's a Starbucks, they're gonna have that mint majesty or whatever they call it, which is just mint tea. Just don't ask for a Melissa infusion. Hey, I'll have one small infusion of Melissa. Actually, let's make that a large Melissa. Excuse me, sir, can you repeat that? I want a Melissa infusion for the radiation. Now, I do wanna add the caveat that the study did two cups of tea a day for 30 days, so it's hard to know if that one cup right before you go on the plane would really do it, but it can't hurt to blast yourself with phytonutrients right before you get on, and maybe if you're gonna travel, start drinking the tea for a couple days, who knows? All right, now for hack number two, the vitamin C iron hack. A lot of people are always pointing to how, oh, animal iron, that heme iron is superior in absorption to plant iron. Well, firstly, the most recent study comparing vegan deficiency rates to omnivores, et cetera, found that prevalence of iron deficiency was comparable across all diet groups. But for women especially, why not get iron on lock anyway? And looking at the population in the US in terms of adolescent girls and childbearing women, we are looking at about 10% of women having iron deficiency, and that goes up to around 20% for black and Mexican women, which is not good. I've only briefly touched on this topic before, but looking to this review on the topic of iron, they mentioned several studies that demonstrate that vitamin C helps increase the absorbability of iron. In fact, orange juice containing 70 milligrams of vitamin C increased iron absorption from a breakfast meal by two and a half times. Now that might be kind of cryptic and daunting, and that's why I wanna talk about the practical aspects. And it turns out that just one medium orange has 70 milligrams of vitamin C. And perhaps most importantly, it doesn't have to be the vitamin C from citrus, quote. The addition of cauliflower, which also contains about 70 milligrams of ascorbic acid, which is just vitamin C, to a vegetarian meal increased the absorption of non-heme iron three times. And people might be thinking, oh, now I have to eat a ton of nasty cauliflower. Well, no, that's just one quarter of a head of cauliflower and maybe like bell peppers more, that's just one third of a bell pepper to get that amount of vitamin C. And just to drive it home in terms of corn, that same amount of vitamin C increased bioavailability of iron by six times. So many hacks that one might be in danger of cutting themselves. Really what this is saying is that if you eat a reasonable amount of fruits and vegetables, you're gonna be way better off in terms of iron. And I talk about eating whole starches and stuff, so I think it's a good point to make that sometimes people get a little too into the starches, they're just going, you know, straight potatoes and straight brown rice and stuff, and instead get a variety of fruits and vegetables as well. And I wanna add a bonus hack, which is the onion slash garlic mineral absorption hack. And that is that if you combine onions and or garlic with grains and beans, you can increase iron and zinc absorption very notably. We're talking about 50 to 70%, depending on whether it's a bean or a cereal and whether it's garlic and onion. Such a unique hack, Mike. I bet no one's ever eaten onions before unsubbed. Anyway, in terms of practicality, now when I'm making brown rice, I might chop that onion up before I cook it and throw it in to cook with it as well. And for garlic, they were looking at 0.5 grams of garlic per 10 grams of grain. And for onions, it was three grams of onions per 10 grams of grain. Another way to look at it would be 20 parts grain, one part garlic, or three or four parts grain and one part onion. Not too complicated. 
And the researchers believe it was just due to the sulfur rich compounds that are in the allium family, which includes onions, shallots, garlic, etc. All right, the next hack is pretty common knowledge, but I wanna go into the specifics of it. And that is the pepper and turmeric absorption hack. Firstly, I wanna say that we're talking about pepper like black pepper and not bell peppers and hot peppers, which are part of the nightshade family. And in terms of turmeric, it's super anti-inflammatory and has many benefits, but the absorption of it on its own is not very high. However, this study found that combining the two can get you a 2000% absorption rate, which is 20 times the absorption of turmeric. And that's because of pepperin, which is that active ingredient in pepper. Also pharmacokinetics, that's a cool word. In the study, it was quote, two grams of pure curcumin powder combined with 20 milligrams of pure pepperin powder. Curcumin is the active ingredient in turmeric. And so the question is, what are these practically in terms of the actual foods? In terms of pepper, it appears that 20 milligrams of pepperin is about what the average person eating a Western diet consumes over the entire day. Of course, that would have to be eaten all at once with the turmeric, and we're talking about 300 milligrams of pepper, which turns out to be about three dashes, whatever that means, which is more understandably one eighth of a teaspoon. Now in terms of actual turmeric eaten, they did two grams of curcumin and because on a good day, turmeric is gonna have 5% curcumin, we're looking at like 40 grams of turmeric. That translates to two tablespoons, which I think might just be a little bit too much for one sitting. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe if you go crazy with a curry, it could work. And speaking of curry, it is pretty amazing that ancient people went, oh, turmeric and pepper, I'm gonna put them together. And maybe they had some intuitive sense that it blasted the synergetic absorption power. That wasn't, is that English? Maybe they just liked the taste, maybe they knew. However, not all curry actually contains pepper and not all of it contains 40 grams of turmeric, but I will say this is still an important notable hack because no matter how much turmeric you're eating, you're gonna be better off putting some pepper in there. And who knows, you might still get a pretty notable effect with half of what the study used. All right, now for the next hack, which is the amla cholesterol hack. Amla is the Indian gooseberry. It's super high in antioxidants. It is from India. It might be the best thing that Ayurveda gave us because Ayurveda also gave us putting ghee up your butt. That's clarified butter. Anyway, studies have shown its ability to laughably lower cholesterol. And because we're getting into the territory of medical advice, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Dr. Greger of nutritionfacts.org on this one. But give people just about a half teaspoon of amla powder a day, uh, not some extract or something, just dried Indian gooseberries, a powdered fruit, and this is what happens. That's like a 35, 40% drop in three weeks. Absolutely astounding. What we care about most is LDL, the so-called bad cholesterol, sh shooting for under at least 70, ideally. No impact of the placebos, but again, just about a half teaspoon of amla, which would cost you about five cents a day, so like a, a buck fifty a month, and boom. These results knocked my socks off. I mean, they're just on. Believable. Now I will say we definitely don't know if it would give everybody that dramatic cholesterol lowering effect, especially in different areas of the world with different variables, but it's pretty astounding. And perhaps the worst thing about amla is that it tastes horrible, which is probably why you'd want to take it in pill form. And it's kind of like if you have a chart in terms of the least healthy, best tasting foods, it goes all the way up to the worst tasting, healthiest foods, like amla would be right up here. It's really nasty. But if these results can be reproduced on a larger scale and in the Western world, it definitely makes statins pretty laughable. So just wait till some douchey pharmaceutical company comes along, tweaks it, patents it, and then calls it Omladine and charges you $400 a bottle. Talk to your doctor today about using Omladine. I've been told by the young folks that it hacks you. Actually, sir, it's, it's that it's a hack? Oh. All right, now for the final hack, which is a little bit more speculative, and that is the sludge blood greens hack. If you watch my channel, you probably know by now that I do not view oil as a health food. Let's just leave it at that. I've talked in depth about the lowering of oxygen content, slowing of blood flow, and the stacking of blood cells like quarters, which I refer to as sludge blood. And we also have the artery paralysis, which several studies have documented. But what happens if you're say traveling and your only choices for vegan food are say a restaurant that has pretty oily food? 
starve or eat? The answer appears to be greens from the Vogel study on the Mediterranean diet showing a you know reasonable artery paralysis after eating olive oil. That lowering and flow-mediated dilation appears to have been lowered with salad and vinegar by about two-thirds compared to olive oil. So other words, the effect of olive oil on arteries was significantly blunted by adding greens and we don't know if it was the vinegar too or not, it makes sense that the greens would delay the absorption of the oil into your system. Vinegar also has positive effects. So for example, if you're in an airport and you have super oily food, maybe you wanna add a side salad and maybe you wanna get it with balsamic vinegar. But again, we don't know how much this would actually affect real people on a daily basis, but it doesn't hurt to be eating some greens. Okay, so maybe this video was mostly about drinking tea and eating vegetables, but it was interesting to me once again, who knows how all these hacks will really work, but with all hacks, it's not really about how much they work. It's about how trendy you feel when you are doing them. All right, and finally, I wanna mention that the idea for doing a video centered around bioavailability was very inspired by one of my Patreons, Matt, so thank you very much for that idea. And the final point, this nerdy vegan shirt is from Meaningful Paws. I'll link them in the description below, though I do not make any funds off of their endeavor. Their shirt's just really nice, so, all right. That's it for today. Feel free to like and subscribe and thank you for watching.